Hello and welcome everybody, King Demps here and today I'm going to bring you a little preview of the Blast Premier 4 group stages. These groups kick off tomorrow, uh, first up we got Group A with Astralis, EG, Vitality and Liquid. Now basically I'm just going to quickly take you through this group, uh, anything interesting I see. We're going to talk a little bit about map pool, we're going to talk a little bit about the teams and the players, like the form they're in running into this event. So I'll just kick things off straight away. Um, Astralis and Evil Geniuses, we're not going to talk about either of these teams too much because both teams are going to be playing with not their first choice roster. Um, Astralis have Zipnik standing in for Glaive, uh, which means Magisk is going to be in-game leading. Astralis didn't disappoint at ESL Pro League, but they didn't make it out of their groups. They looked about as good as you can expect with a new player, uh, a player who's never touched Tier 1 CS before in the form of Lucky. Um, he looked pretty solid at those group stages of the ESL Pro League, but... I don't think you can expect too much from Astralis in this group, particularly not when they've got two very strong teams in Vitality and Liquid in the group as well. If it was single elimination, it might be a little bit different because obviously Vitality and Liquid are on the same side of the bracket. But because it's double elimination and whoever loses um, in that opening best of three between Vitality and Liquid is going to go down into the lower bracket, they're probably just going to run it straight back through the lower bracket. As for Evil Geniuses, they're in an even weirder situation right now with Daps playing instead of Stan and now Breeze missing and they're going to have Spellan playing instead. I don't really see either of these teams doing anything particularly. EG looked pretty poor at ESL Pro League. I expect them to look pretty poor again here. Astralis looked meh at ESL Pro League and I expect them to look meh here as well. Now, moving on to the two interesting teams in this group, we have Team Liquid and Vitality. Now, I'm going to start by saying I expect Vitality to get out of this group in first place. I expect Liquid to come out of this group behind them. And there's a couple of really interesting things to talk about between Team Vitality and Liquid. And the first thing I want to hit on is the map pool. Now, Team Liquid are a team that pick Inferno wherever they can, except in instances where they can get Inferno as the decider. At ESL Pro League, their general veto strategy was we're going to ban Ancient, they're going to try and pick Inferno wherever they can, unless they know the other team is comfortable to play Inferno, in which case they'll pick Overpass and try and get Inferno as the decider. Liquid are very good on both Overpass and Inferno. Those are two, their two sort of favorite maps. The trouble is, if we look at the flip side, Vitality are also very good on Inferno and Overpass and are willing to pick those two maps as well. The one real difference in the map pool, as neither team seems to play Ancient, neither team is particularly keen on Vertigo. The big kind of difference in the map pool is Liquid have been having some troubles on Nuke as of late, whereas Vitality's Nuke is very, very strong. Um, Liquid lost at ESL Pro League to Furia and and the other team they lost to was Heroic on Nuke so nothing to be too ashamed of there but Liquid's Nuke hasn't been one of their strong maps it's not one that they pick it's one they seem willing to play in vetoes like they're not going to ban it but I think the main reason they're not going to ban it is because they are currently not willing to play Ancient. The other interesting thing I think in terms of the map pool is potentially Liquid could go for a punish and try and pick Dust 2 into Vitality. Vitality's Dust 2 wasn't that great at ESL Pro League. They lost it to Na'Vi, which isn't too disappointing. But they did also lose it to Spirit. And then at Cologne, they lost Dust 2 to FaZe. This version of Vitality seems to be willing to play Dust 2. Like, they're not going to veto it. But they don't seem to be all that great at it. However, it's not really a map Liquid have been playing all too much either. Uh, let me just go and take a look. Liquid have only played it twice with the current iteration and they won it both times. So if I was Liquid, I might look for a Dust 2 punish pick. I don't think if I was Liquid, I would go to... I would definitely not go to Vitality's Inferno. I think Vitality are one of the best teams in the world on that map. And I'd be hesitant to go into Vitality's Overpass, particularly with how Vitality made Na'Vi look on that map. And Na'Vi are a good Overpass team. I don't think Liquid are quite on the level of either Vitality or Na'Vi. So I would stay away from maps that are strong for both of the teams. Honestly, if I was Liquid going into this veto, I would try and pick Dust2. I would leave Overpass or Inferno to come out as one of the deciders. 
seeing as this is a group and it's a group that liquid will probably get through anyway i don't expect them to pull out anything crazy in the vetoes i think we'll probably get overpass inferno as the two maps either teams pick and then whatever mirage or something as a decider um but we'll just have to wait and see either way i think the map pool between these two teams are interesting i think vitality has an edge because they're so good on liquid's two best maps liquid's two home maps However, I think there are some map pool weaknesses for either team. Liquid's nuke looks a bit shaky. Vitality's Dust 2 looks a little bit shaky. That I think if either team wanted to get creative in the veto, there are options to take the veto somewhere that might be a little bit more advantageous for either team. It depends on how brave they're willing to be. And because it's a group stage, it's the opening round, it's a group both teams will probably make it through. I don't think they're going to show their hand too much in the veto. Particularly, for instance, if either of these teams have been working on Ancient, for example. But I don't think they'd show their hand here if they have picked it up. The next thing to talk about is obviously the players uh, that are in form here. Liquid looked better at ESL Pro League than they have for a little while. Um, and I think particularly Grim stepped up hugely. I think Grim was looking really, really solid as kind of that third star behind Naf and Elige. That kind of middleman that kind of ties together the more supportive elements of Fallen and Stewie with the carry elements of Naf and Elige. I think you need that middleman who can do some fragging work, but also it doesn't need huge amounts of resources to succeed. And Grim looks like he might be developing into that sort of player. Naf was looking huge as usual. 12 clutches won over ESL Pro League. This is actually the highest number of clutches won to maps played of any player at that event, which is pretty impressive. The problem is, is on the other side, Vitality, four of their players were in the top 10 for clutches one. Everybody on Vitality was willing clutches all over the place. So if you want the clutch factor to be your kind of boon over Vitality, it's just not going to happen. Anybody on that team on Vitality pretty much can clutch. The only person who didn't have huge cl clutch numbers was Apex, I think. And, you know, he's the in-game leader, so we can let him off. Fallen was a really big improver, I think, for Liquid at ESL Pro League. Whilst his overall rating was nothing special compared to the rest of the events he's been on Team Liquid for, it was the fact that in certain maps he looked so dominant and looked like he could take over the map and be a carry force. I'm not sure we've seen too much of that Fallen since he joined Team Liquid, and we saw it a few times, particularly in the series against NIP. That was one series where he had a great series across both maps. He actually looked like a dominant orping force and somebody that could take over the map with the big green gun. He was still inconsistent as he tends to be these days. He tends to have some 1.3 maps and then have a few 0.6 maps in terms of HLTV rating. That's just how Fallen is these days. He's never going to have a tournament where he's going to blow you off the board and carry the whole damn thing. But if he can get to a place where he can give liquid maps where he pops off and carries the map, particularly if the other orper on the other side of things isn't having such a great game and he can dominate that matchup, then that can help elevate Liquid to a level that they haven't been at for a little while. So just to quickly summarize then, I expect Vitality to get out of this group in first place pretty comfortably. I expect Liquid to come out of this group in second place pretty comfortably. I don't expect Astralis or Evil Geniuses to get anywhere near it. If anybody was going to out of those two, it would be Astralis. The fact that they are operating with that core of Zipnix, Magus, Dupree, maybe there can still be some sort of stable baseline that Astralis can use to maybe mount some sort of run in this group. However, I don't see it happening. I don't see them having enough to beat Vitality and Liquid, which is probably what they would have to do. They would probably have to beat both of those teams or beat one of them twice. I don't see that happening. I think it's very unlikely with the Astralis lineup that's attending. If they had Glaive and they'd had more time to settle with Lucky, then yeah, I'd entertain it. But not in the state that they're in right now, so I expect them to go out of the group. I do expect Astralis to come out of this group ahead of Evil Geniuses. With the fact that they were operating with two stand-ins, with the way that they looked at ESL Pro League, I can't imagine Evil Geniuses are even going to make double figures in a single map in this group. I hope they do for their sake. I hope they show us some good Counter-Strike, but I don't think it's looking good for the NA squad. I hope you enjoyed this little preview, guys. If you did, you know the drill. Like, comment, favorite, and subscribe. And if you didn't, for your own sake, please stop watching. Take it easy, guys, and I'll see you next time.